You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to spice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, Art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought it was a great start. Because- Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at Vincent Van Gogh's Sunflowers. Vincent Van Gogh grew up in the Netherlands. He was named after his grandfather, who had been a prominent art dealer. Art was really the family business. His uncle and his brother Theo were art dealers as well. Even Vincent spent time working as an art dealer before deciding to pour himself into creating his own work. In his early work, Van Gogh focused on studies of peasants with a relatively dark, neutral palette. His first major work was The Potato Eaters, but he struggled to find an audience appreciative of his work. He wrote to his brother, Theo, who also served as his art dealer, and Theo told him that people wanted bright, colorful paintings, like the Impressionist works that were all the rage in Paris. Vincent eventually moved to Paris and surrounded himself with fellow artists. He adopted a more colorful palette, and that's actually how he got started on the Sunflowers. Vincent began making still life paintings as color studies. The Impressionist paintings of still lives with colorful flowers sold very well, and while Vincent van Gogh railed against the commercialization of the art world, he also craved acceptance and validation that would come from others appreciating and buying his work. Sadly, Vincent van Gogh received little recognition for his work during his lifetime. One of his doctors actually so loathed a portrait that Van Gogh had painted, he used the painting to patch a hole in a chicken coop. But that would come later. Van Gogh started painting flowers early on as he worked to develop his style and color palette. While many artists took inspiration from all types of flowers, Vincent Van Gogh became closely associated with one type in particular. He did color studies using several types of flowers, but he really loved the sunflowers. Vincent wanted to be known as the painter of sunflowers. The man and the flower became so closely associated that at his funeral, many friends paid their respects by bringing sunflowers. The sunflower is an interesting choice, though. Most artists shied away from sunflowers. They preferred the soft and delicate petals of roses, or carnations, lilies, pretty much anything but sunflowers. The sunflower was coarse and unrefined. I would say that's likely what drew Van Gogh to the sunflower. He always had a soft spot for those on the fringes. From his early days studying the priesthood, doing missionary work, when he gave his lodgings to a homeless man while he slept on a simple straw mat, to those early days as a painter doing studies of peasants, Vincent van Gogh kept his eye on those that most people simply looked past. The sunflower is rough, but beautiful. It basks in the light, and van Gogh saw them as a symbol of gratitude. I would say they also seem to be symbolic of hope. Van Gogh first painted sunflowers when he was in Paris. Another painter, Paul Gauguin, was impressed by the work, and Van Gogh took that as a tremendous compliment because he really admired Gauguin, even though Paul Gauguin was an absolute garbage human that nobody should admire. Still, the compliments from Gauguin gave Van Gogh the validation he needed and convinced him that he was on the right track. A bit later, Vincent Van Gogh moved to the south of France. He hoped to set up a community of artists in Arles. To get things started, he rented a little yellow house and invited Gauguin to stay there and paint with him. When Gauguin accepted the invitation, Vincent spent all his money furnishing the house, and he made a couple of paintings of sunflowers and used them to decorate the guest room where Gauguin would stay. Gauguin would later paint a picture of Vincent van Gogh painting sunflowers, during the time that they stayed together. He said the still lives of sunflowers were, quote, completely Vincent. This is where I have to reluctantly agree with Gauguin. Sunflowers are completely Vincent. They're a bit rough, 
unrefined, often overlooked or underappreciated, but also bright, bold, and beautiful. Arguably trying too hard at times, but with a directness and an earnestness that you just can't help but love if you take the time to look with an open heart. The sunflower really is completely Vincent. For the second segment in this week's mini episode, I'm actually going to be playing a snippet from another podcast. Uh, About a week ago, I put an episode into the feed introducing all of you to the podcast Based on a True Story. Um, The podcast is wonderfully researched comparing Hollywood's version of history to the actual events that took place. And because he's been such a wonderful supporter, um, mentioning and running ads for my show, I want to give a shout out, give whatever support I can. So I'm going to play a little segment uh, to give you a taste of the episode on the movie uh, and Eternity's Gate. And this is Um, a movie that was based on Vincent Van Gogh. So I thought it might be appropriate for this episode. And if you enjoy it, you can find Based on a True Story wherever you get your podcasts. So early on in the movie, we are introduced to Paul Gauguin. And the impression that I saw from this meeting was Vincent looked up to him, but it doesn't really explain why. Can you give a little more historical context around who he was and if he looked up to him? First of all, it's I'm not sure he met him at that point. We're not quite sure when they met. So it's a reasonable screen device to have Vincent meet him there in advance of, of Gauguin going to live with him in, uh, in Arles. Gauguin was a little bit more professionally accomplished than Van Gogh was at that moment. He had sold a little bit. Uh, he had a circle of, of admirers, Gauguin did, especially in pont on the, on the coast. You know, he'd been to Martinique and a, a, an artist had gone with him to Martinique. So there's reason to believe that Vincent would have looked up to him to a certain extent because he thought of him as slightly more uh, successful and more a part of the artistic community than Vincent himself was. But the, the differences were not extreme, meaning that Gauguin was not tremendously successful at that point. Vincent's brother, Theo, was an art dealer. And Go, Gauguin was interested in, in Vincent, as were the other artists, to the extent that they were interested in him, because he was a conduit to Theo. The, there, there were very few art dealers in Paris at the time who were showing the work of the most recent avant-garde. In fact, even the Impressionists had, had very few dealers who were interested in them. And um, while Vincent was in Arles, about the time that Gauguin went to live with him, Theo had what has become a famous show of Monet and Rodin. That gives you a sense of of how significant Theo was in their world. So what Vincent really felt towards Gauguin was the opportunity for making a social connection. In addition to feeling unsuccessful professionally, even more intensely than that, Vincent felt terribly lonely hope you enjoyed that clip and if you did please check out the based on a true story podcast and of course if you're enjoying this podcast please be sure to leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app this concludes this week's episode of who arted part of the airwave media podcast network if you found this tolerable please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app you can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at who arted podcast on twitter instagram and tiktok and of course on the website who podcast done